Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. JPTV, believe it or don't, is right back at you again. Thank you for tuning in and taking your time out to just be with me today. I really appreciate your time. And please don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. We've got a special guest tonight. I mean, I mean, today, well, wherever you're at around the world, we're here, we, we are heard from around the world. Okay. So whatever time zone you're in, thank you for checking us out. All right. So we got a special guest in here today, and I, I guess this is the first pro boxer. No, we had a we had a boxer in here before, but I think he was local or something. So, but this is on another level. You know what I'm saying? This is on another level, and it's a female. Oh man, she's incredible. Let me just give you a little history of it, okay? <laughs> And I want to welcome Celine. What's Hi. happening? Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Amazing. I did have a sound effect that, that was supposed to go with that. But I don't know what's going on with it. But <laughs> no thank problem. you for tuning in and checking us out and really responding and coming on to this platform. Really appreciate it today. No, I'm 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 excited. Um, always thankful of people that reach out for to do interviews like yourself. It's people like you that you know keep us keep us going, and it's truly motivational that uh, we can come on your show and and you know get to know the the fans get to know us a little more. So thank you for having me. Amazing. Okay, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go through a little. <laughs> icebreaker just to let everyone know just just this is just a regular interview everyone stay calm you're just talking to jp <laughs> all right so the icebreaker for today is your top five female fighters your top five male fighters let's start let's start with the females females i'll go with sinisa estrada clarissa shields katie taylor Amanda Serrano. I'm um, one more, right? One more. Uh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's smart, smart. I, I got to think about me, right? Yeah, you got to think I about like you. Me too. You, you got to think about you. Okay, how about for the fellas? How about for the fellas? Who you got? Uh, No particular order. I'm just going to... You know, okay. stay off the top of my head. Okay. Um, Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, Canelo, uh, Bivol, um, Usyk. That's four, right? <laughs> one more. One, one more. One more. One more. One more. Somebody that I just think that isn't doesn't have the 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 fan base or just you know he's he's a monster but he's not appreciated as much better be of he his power is incredible okay so so you don't have jake paul up there i mean come on now jake not paul? yet not yet he, he's working up there but not yet <laughs> how do you feel about him shocking the world like shocking the boxing um world how do you feel well, about that well, look, he he's he's done really good by Amanda Serrano. He's you know got her those paydays. He's he's put her up there. But let's not forget that you know Amanda Serrano had already been built to be who she is by Lou DiBella. So he got the product that was already right there at the top. You know, just needed to break out, and um, he did that for her. So I'm happy for that. Um, you know, he's. He's he's working hard. He's in the gym. He's working hard. But let's be real. He's not fighting boxers. He's he's fighting MMA fighters. And the day that he do, does fight a boxer, it'll be an opponent. You know, it'll be somebody for him to beat. You know, it's it's business. He's a smart dude, and well, he's doing it his way. You know. So let's hear it. MMA fighters cannot compete versus a professional boxer it's just like boxers can't compete in mma you know it's they're two different sports mm -hmm. uh what what mma fighters do is stand up it's not boxing because i've sparred mma fighters before and it's just 
it's completely different. They, the the way they control their distance, you know, they're they're looking looking out for kicks, all that stuff. You can't throw. They don't like body shots, all those things, you know. So it's not really boxing, boxing. It's more like I like to like they say it's stand up. It's not boxing. Interesting. So um, while we're on the topic of boxing, right? I um let the fans know why did you choose boxing? Why not a sports model or a ring model or, or somebody <laughs> in a magazine or a movie or something like that? Why did you choose boxing? Well, um, I am. I have four brothers. I'm the only girl in my family, besides my mother. Um, I grew up in a in a household with nothing but boys that were always, you know, being tough and, and doing rugged things and whatnot. And so I wanted to prove to my brothers that I was also tough, that I could do the things that they could do. And um, I just fell in love with the sport. You know, growing up in a Mexican household, everybody watches boxing. It's, it's like religion, you know. Every Saturday night, every Saturday night you watched boxing back in the day. So... I would sit there with my mom, my dad, and my brothers and, and watch the fights. You know, the whole neighborhood would get together. And, you know, you had those little black boxes to buy the pay-per-views back in the day. So uh, the whole neighborhood would get together, watch boxing. And I just love the sport. I love the sport and the competitiveness and the fact that it's a very, very difficult sport. So that's that's what drew me to it the most. Yeah. You're... Um... Uh, and and to talk about your your family, there's a story out there. I know it's everywhere um, about your brother. Um, how are you um, overcoming that? You know, it's I can say that there there's no time for grieving to stop. There is not a certain way for a person to grieve. You know, everybody has their own their own ways, and um, I think that. You know, after nine years, I've I finally understood that he is gone, that he's not coming back, and um, that he would want me to be happy. You know, for for so long, I I was just, you know, felt guilty for being here, and and he was gone. So um, it's just I'm learning to be happy again. I'm I'm still a work in progress. But I think at the seven year mark of him being gone, that's where I really started realizing, hey, it's okay for you to be happy and enjoy life, even though he's gone, because he would like you to be happy. Yeah, the young brother was uh, definitely on his way up, man. Absolutely. Um, yeah. He was part of Team USA. He was, you know, he was a big kid. He weighed 100, he fought at 141 pounds. And he was only 17 years old, so Whoa. so I I know that he was gonna be doing great things, and um, <laughs> yeah, life happens, and I miss him every single day. But I try to to do my mess best to make him proud. Now, in that situation, have you felt it in your heart to forgive those people, those murders? I have not. I have not. I don't think I ever will. Um, you know, parents aren't supposed to bury their children. My parents uh, completely changed since my brother's passing. It took so much out of them. It's like um, it's like they're alive, but at the same time they're gone. They're not here. And um, to, for me to see my parents suffering every single day. I, I cannot forgive that. I will never forgive that. And my little brother, he was a good kid. You know, yeah, we lived in the hood and and he was doing well. He was doing well for himself. He was going to school, from school to the gym. You know, he was never out and about. He was never doing bad things. So th they took something good from us. And um, I, I can't, I don't think I can ever forgive them. Interesting. Um so when I first ran across this story and I started watching your fights and just looking at you and how your demeanor in your fights, I, 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 I think I kind of see that in your fights. 
do you carry it in your fight that that resentment I think uh, my brother passed away in 2013, and I definitely have. I definitely have used it, you know, in, in many of my fights as motivation to keep going and to just fight harder. And I can say, though, it's it's been like different phases because when my brother first passed away, um, it, it was so recent that I felt like, I was numb to all emotion and I was just angry. And I was so numb at the same time that I had, that I wouldn't show anything in my fights. Like I wouldn't, I would just go in there and fight. I was just like a robot. And um, I didn't, I didn't want to show that I was weak. And um, for many years I did that. And now recently i'm using it in the sense of all right i i can be who i am be sulem urbina and at the same time you know remember my little brother and just go that much harder it's it's just it's different okay we're going to talk about that later um now because i realized with with anger uh, nothing works and it's 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 better to forgive so you can let go, you know, but that's easier said than done, especially when someone is not in that situation. And um, are, are you a, a religious or spiritual type? I, I um, you know, when I was a kid, we, we grew up as Jehovah Witnesses, actually, when we were uh, living in Mexico. And then we came to the United States and, and we fell away from religion. Um, I, I can't say that I go to church every weekend, mm -hmm. but I do pray every day and I have my beliefs and I'm respectful of, you know, everybody that has their own beliefs. And um, I think that's that's the, the, the thing. Just be respectful, be a good person and treat others with, with respect and, and uh, religion won't separate us. Interesting. OK, so let's go ahead and move along from that. Uh, I want to ask you the disparities in women's boxing versus male boxing. Right? It's a, it's, it's very, um, and the, uh, of course the men is getting paid more, but how are the women surviving financially in that sport? Well, you know what, women, we're surviving in this sport because we really, really love this sport. Um, a lot of us work during the day. A lot of us, you know, have have uh, jobs right after we train. A lot of us, you know, are just trying to hustle with whichever way we can. You know, some some are modeling, some are you know doing uh, subscriptions on on different platforms of social media, whatever you can to you know keep this dream going. Um, I'm very fortunate. I'm lucky that my husband at the moment. You know, he, he helps me out and he's taking care of me so that I can focus on my craft and train. But, um, you know, everybody's story is different. And uh, it's, it. I can't see men being as motivated as the women are without getting paid like we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't see it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, now um, speak about your husband. He's still your trainer, right? Yes, he is. He is my coach. Wow. So how, so how does that, how does that work out? Like, um, does he know, like, I can't say this because you, I got to watch what I say. You know, um, for many years, I felt like, uh, since he is my husband, he felt that he could talk to me a certain way that he wouldn't talk to other boxers because he felt a little too comfortable. And, uh, you know, after, I had my first loss, you know, we talked about that. And I told him that that was affecting me a lot, that I needed to be treated with respect, that I um, I didn't like certain things that he was doing in the gym with me. And it was just communication. And since then, we've, we've been working so much better and communicating better. And, uh, you know, I, I respect that he has to talk to me certain ways sometimes because it is... It's a fight. You have to be mentally ready. If you're not, you're going to be eaten, eaten alive. 
but at the same time, you know, there's certain lines that you can't cross. So are you still cooking and cleaning and washing clothes and, oh, yeah. and stuff like that? Of course, I do all that. I do all really? that. I am, I'm, I'm a whole housewife. <laughs> I, uh, I, um, I get home from training. I, I cook, I clean. Um, my hu- I make food for my husband to go to work every day. Um, all that stuff. So, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I have to, I have to, I mean, it, it, it it's a partnership, you know, That's and, uh, and yes, it's a role at the same time, but we both yeah. help each other and, um, it works for us. Do, do that are, is your husband ahead of you? Yes. He is. Amazing. So you still obey your husband? Of course. <laughs> I obey my husband, but I mean, we, we just communicate. He obeys me too. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It works. Right. It works. No, I'm just kidding. That's good. That's good. That's, uh, that's very rare, you know, but, um, I mean, from, from my knowledge, but, you know, as I learned that, I was like, wow, you know, that's very interesting to have, <laughs> very interesting to have and, and keep it going. Uh, much success to you all. Thank you. Thank um, you. So what do you think about these? What do you think about the fighters that are uh, born men, but acting like pretending like they're women and, and knocking uh, females out legally? Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, uh, I think, you know, I, I'm very respectful of everybody and, and they're entitled to feel as they want to feel. But when they want to compete in a division where we are genetically different, I don't think it's fair. Um, I think if they want to do that, they can have their own division and fight amongst themselves. I have no issue with that. Uh, but genetically, we are different. Everybody knows that. I mean, just look at the way uh, people say we have two versus three minute rounds. We're genetically different from men. It's It doesn't take a scientist to know that. And um, for me, I don't think it's fair. And also, I will do anything I can to help women's sports keep going because it's not fair for, you know, myself or other women coming up. If we allow that at this time, Man. then... Later on, you know, women's sports could be uh, obliterated. Genetically yeah. born women's sports could be obliterated. Yeah, that's definitely something that uh, uh, you all should stand on because they, they, they're really taking over. Uh, there, there was this um, man pretending like he was a woman named um, Fallon Fox, right? I mean, knocking females out. But there was one female who beat him. And uh, that was very interesting. Would yeah. you would you would you get in there with one of them? I wouldn't because that opens the door for more to be able to do it. And not because I'm scared or anything like that, but it's just not fair. And like I said, it would open the door more for more uh, transgender uh, women to to be able to to do that, and it would hurt our sport in the future. You know, I want to look out for the little girls that are going to be women boxing someday, you know? And um, so that's the reason why I won't do it, and I won't allow it. Um, I, I totally agree with you. Um, do you see the world going, like, in a great direction nowadays? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's going in all sorts of directions, you know? <laughs> I don't – I think I – think, um, Essentially, morals have gone out the window, and uh, we don't respect one another, and that's where, you know, the start of everything. We don't respect, you know, other people's religions. Uh, We don't respect other people's beliefs and and whatnot, and we decide to insult each other, and, and that's the start of everything. I mean, we don't even respect the places we live in sometimes because, I mean... You go to certain places and, you know, the filth, you know, we have to, we're not taking care of Mother Earth either. So 
I mean, it all starts with respect. Morals have gone out the out the window, and um, you know, that's with, that's where we're at right now. But mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you just have to put your own little grain, and you know, be a mindful, respectful person, and you know, do as much as you can personally. When you speak about morals, where do you get your morals from? You know, um, my mother and and my father have been exceptional role models to myself. Um, like like everyone, you know, there's there's issues in the family, but at the end of the day, my father always took care of my brothers and I, my mother, and my mother was always there for us. Uh, a lot of people just have children to have them without spending the time with their children, talking and teaching them right from wrong. It's not just about having children. It's about raising them to being, you know, good, uh, law-abiding citizens, respectful human beings, caring, you know, humble kids. Um, my parents were always there for me, and 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 that's that's where that comes from. Yeah, and uh, that's definitely the answer. Um, when I take a look at the communities. I see a lot of uh, single home families and uh, there's no father there. So the mom is, uh, I give her the benefit of the doubt. She's doing all she can, but she wild as well too. And uh, these kids are just uh, running out here doing any, doing, doing any and everything. And I want to ask you, what's wrong with these women out here? <laughs> you know, I think, I think like, like I said, you know, we grow up a certain way and we see the same thing. And sometimes we just go on about doing the same thing. Um, at the end of the day, I, I am a firm believer that you should want to do better for yourself all the time. And so if, you know, my mother did things a certain way and I didn't like them, I should want to do them better. I should want to, you know, overcome that barrier and, you know, make a difference. Um, I, I, for myself, uh, my two older brothers, you know, they went down the wrong path. So I knew exactly what I didn't want to do with my life. You know, I, I wanted something different. I wanted to take care of myself and I wanted you know, to, to break the cycle. You should want to break the cycle. Um, it's, it goes all back to men and women. It, it doesn't matter what it is, morals, you know, and, um, I don't think our, our morals are, are very clear nowadays. And, um, I hope, I hope that we can all try, try to just get a little better each day. Yeah. Why not? Right. Okay, before we switch gears, we're going to play this little skit real quick. Check it out. In 1902, while fighting in Colorado, Johnson met another woman. And what a time she gave me. Clara. Miss Clara Kerr. She ran off to St. Louis with another man. That's the last black woman I'll ever trust. And I feel him on that. Uh, That's right. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think there's like a generalization of you know there's good and bad everywhere. But you know that was back then when a lot of you know white and black and stuff was going on. And you remember Jack Johnson? You know he he was knocking white folks out all around the world, and and had white folks uh, with him in his, in his camp as well. But that brings me to my next question, right? Men and women and stuff like that. Would you purchase one of these? No. If you're if you're riding, say you're riding all the way down to Arizona through the desert or something like that, and uh, you need to pull over for a little pit stop. No, I just go behind the bush. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right now I'm about to put you in the The Hot Box 
got to answer these questions as quick as you can, okay? Don't spend too much time on it. Uh, some answers that you come up with, we will kind of discuss. So, uh, you know, just answer as quickly as you can, okay? What is the purpose of a woman? Purpose of a woman is to be strong and to be, at the same time, loving and caring. Do you support abortion? No. Did you vote for the great white hope? No, <laughs> I don't think so. Do you know who the great white hope is? Uh, Trump? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. What? You didn't? No. Amazing. No. Why? no, no. Okay. I mean, I can't, I can't vote for somebody that, you know, talks about my race a certain way and looks at me a certain way. Okay. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Okay. Now, do, uh, do, do Hispanics... When they when they around certain people, do they do they when they talk in their own language? Are they talking trash about the other per person? No, <laughs> not always. I mean, sometimes it happens, but no. Is the Earth flat? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you believe in racism? What do you mean by do I believe? Do, do I believe it's okay or do I believe it exists? Because it do, does exist. Do you believe racism? But it's not, it's okay. Do you believe racism exists? Yeah, everywhere. Why? What, what, where's your proof? I mean, I, I grew up here in Arizona. I mean, look up uh, SB 1070 was racial profiling. profiling. You just looked Hispanic and you were going to get deported. So. I mean, just that and everything. I mean, they look at minorities, you know, colored people a certain way. You see a white person uh, committing a crime, and it's not that they committed a crime. You know, they were just in a bad spot, you know. And you look at ha blacks, Hispanics, and whatnot, and we're drug dealers. We're this, we're that. You know, the, the media pushes us, you know, a certain agenda on us. They make us look a certain way. When when you speak about racism, there could be some type of death at the end, right? Yeah. Or how do you def how do you look at ra racism? Like how how does it look? I mean, racism could be a little bit of everything. I mean, from the fact of you not wanting to shake somebody's hand, generalizing how how certain people are just because of their race. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, completely, you know, violent or anything like that. They're, the looks you get, you know, walking down a, a, a nice mall, you know, things like that. Um, racism is out there. It's just a lot of people are in denial of it. So if I own the company, right, and the black guy walks in and I deny him the job, but the white walks in, and he gets the job. Will I be racist? It, it depends on, you know, how you looked at, if you were just looking at skin, yes. If you're looking at their qualifications and, and who's more prepared for the job, no. You know, if the white guy was more prepared, then I get it. If, you know, the black guy was more prepared and you just, like I said, you just looked at the skin, then I think so. You know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in this that and i also been on both sides right i came to the realization that it did it never existed right but what did exist and what still does exist is it's a spiritual battle between good and evil right and wrong when the terms come in we begin to pick sides choose a side but if we just sit still and just know that whatever's happening in you, whatever whatever's happening in me, outside of me, inside of you, it's, it's all the same thing. It's good and evil, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So those people that were that we call racist these days, and I had a conversation with one of my homeboys about this. 
um, it, I read this, I read this guy named David, Dale Davis, right? We went to the clan and started talking to him and became best friends with one of them, changed his life. So that's that racism, that, that evil thought is just a learned behavior and you can unlearn it. Yeah. After that, you won't be racist no more. You were just an evil guy and you needed to overcome that stuff. And a lot of that comes from anger and stuff like that. Once we overcome the anger, we can do things clearly. And we will know that whatever's going inside of me is going inside of you. And you just haven't overcame that yet. You know, yeah, so, it makes sense. It makes sense that racism is taught. You know? So, I want to know how do you spell ship? No, shop. How do you spell shop? S H O P. What do you do when you get out of green light? When I get out of what? What do you do when you get out of green light? I go. Nah, you wait. You waited too long. You supposed to. You supposed to answer that quick because you know what you was about to say, right? No. I mean, it's because I couldn't. I couldn't understand what he said. That's what so it, it was. Took me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, when's your next fight? Um, I was supposed to fight last weekend, and my fight got canceled. So, wow. right now I'm just waiting on a fight date, and hopefully, yeah, I get some news soon. Well, that's cool. Um, I want to ask you one question, right? And it's about this picture right here, right? Yeah, I got this from your Instagram. It's about this picture right here, right? Mm -hmm. But as you can see in the background, it, now is is that water in the background? Like, <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? Is that water back there? No, actually, that's just cement. It's a studio. It's a studio where um, they do uh, pictures and all that sort of stuff. And I didn't oh. realize it till pe till people actually started mentioning it. Oh, it like right. Oh, okay. So it's a um, a studio, right? I was yeah. like, hold up now. Now, did she just take a dip inside <laughs> the building? <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. All right. So, uh, let me get this off. All right. So, I want to thank you for coming. I appreciate your time. We're going to end it here. Let everyone know how they can follow you and, um, and, and catch up with your next fights and stuff like that. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. T thank you to you for having me. And uh, you guys can keep track of my social media via at Sulaim Urbina on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And now we'll be putting the link in the description for you to follow her, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming past JPTV. Hey, you can either believe it or don't. And I do have something for the haters. Okay. Motherfuckers be showing all that fake ass love. Get that shit away from me. Get that fake ass shit away from me, nigga. Before I explode on one of you bitch ass niggas. And we, and we out. <laughs>